Hi, welcome to The Daily. My name is Brendan Malone. It's Sunday, a little bit more frivolous. As you can see, I'm wearing my uh, Captain America Avengers uh, t-shirt. Um, and, and it sort of ties into what I want to talk about. I, 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 I saw the trailer the other day for the upcoming X-Men movie, Apocalypse. And I was kind of look for, looking forward to this movie, especially after um, Days of Future Past, which I actually think was a pretty good outing compared to some of the previous films. Um, and so I was looking forward to Apocalypse. And then I saw this trailer and I just couldn't believe it. So first of all, um, on, on the big screen, you can see the CGI a bit better. And, and the first thing that struck me was this one particular scene, uh, what was supposed to be quite an impressive scene involving CGI. It just didn't look that good. It really didn't look that good. It almost looked like made for TV stuff. In fact, that might be a bit unfair because a lot of TV CGI now is actually getting better than some of the stuff you see from time to time cropping up in movies. So that wasn't particularly impressive. Uh, and uh, then, obviously, the MacGuffin in this film is the end of the world, the apocalypse again. Uh, we hit this whole end of the world scenario um, and I appreciate the way they played that out in Days of Future Past. To me, it was kind of interesting the way that, you know, went back in time, time travel, and I thought that gave a little bit of a unique spin that enabled them to tell a more fuller story and a more interesting story that sort of kept you hooked. But the whole idea of having yet another scenario involving the end of the world could happen if our heroes don't save the day because most superhero and action movies now revolve around that uh, plot device and it's been done to death i mean literally to the point where avengers age of ultron was really in many ways a, a an almost identical movie to the first film avengers assemble it just had some new villains in it and a new way of destroying the world and it didn't even really carry as much weight so it's getting harder and harder for filmmakers because we just don't have that sort of shock and awe and fear factor involved uh in, in a lot of these end of the world scenarios anymore because we've seen them done from you know from michael bay to danny boyle people have done the end of the world scenarios on a quite a big scale now and and so you know it, Yet again, we're seeing another movie with an end of the world. Now, I know that can't be helped. It's Apocalypse and all the rest of it. Um, but then there's also the factor of, uh, well, first of all, there was the, the cosplay-looking costume that the main villain is wearing. And I was like, ooh. And also, to be fair, it looks a little bit too close uh, to the costume that we saw on the villain in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, you know, there might be a great debate in the comic book world about which one came first. Ah, oh, the comic was there first. But in actual fact, it doesn't matter. In the movie world, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy beat them to it with that particular look. And so to see it turning up again or something that looked pretty similar, I have to say, is kind of a little bit odd. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, but more importantly, uh, the film itself has this clearly seems to be imbued with this bizarre ideology about religious history. Now look, the the well, one of the opening scenes involved uh, um, someone narrating how Apocalypse was um, this replay of all these gods of these different religions, and so when I saw it, I was like, oh, it's one of these films, you know. He's he's you know all the all the gods that religious believers hold true are actually just different forms of this villain, and I was like, it's such an absurd plot concept because it just doesn't. From a logical perspective, it doesn't actually carry any water because of the diversity of belief and natures of these different gods, it just doesn't work. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, I'm willing to overlook that because we live in a culture where a lot of people do not understand religious history. Very few people have a good or even a basic grasp of, of religious scholarship. Uh, and if you're relying on pop culture to fill in the blanks for you, because you're probably not going to get it at school in most places, uh, about these sort of concepts, uh, then you're going to have a pretty deficient understanding and knowledge of these issues. And so I can understand how, and it's Hollywood as well, I can understand how these things creep into films and pop culture. So I was like, okay, I'll ignore it. But then a couple of scenes later, within a minute, we've got yet another scene. Uh, we've got a character talking about how he's bringing the four horsemen of the apocalypse um, to bear. And someone else says, oh, he's copying the Bible. And then the response is, or oh, did the Bible copy him? And I was like, oh, no. This is, you know, like, it was, okay, one bite of the cherry is enough. But when you keep going back, it just, it starts to seem stale and boring. And quite frankly, like, you haven't even bothered to even try to invest much in an intelligent plot. You're just sort of plucking ideas off the internet, probably off conspiracy theory websites. Um, and, and it's frustrating because I think the X-Men is actually a really great universe to, to explore in a more intimate way because 
because of who these characters are and because of this whole idea of being outcasts and and being on the fringe there's such a depth of storytelling that could be happening here um, a more gritty sort of uh, exploration of of loneliness and isolation and all those things that affect people who are pushed to the margins of society. But instead, we've had a series of films that I think just end up getting bogged down in cheap, cliched identity politics and stuff like this. And it just the depth is missing. And it's a real shame because if you're a fan of the comic books, you'll know that that you know, there's so much more of this universe that could be exploited. Unfortunately, it's just not being done proper service. But who knows, I'm prepared to be wrong and maybe when the movie comes out it's going to be the best thing since sliced bread and I'm going to be producing an episode of The Daily where I'm going to rave about how awesome the film was. In the meantime, I'm not holding my breath. Thanks for watching, see you tomorrow on The Daily.